Almighty Suicune, it's time to show me your awesome power. Reveal yourself. I really thought that would work. Pokemon Johto! Pokemon Johto! Hello everyone and welcome back to Every Pokemon Ever. Last time we saved the world from Team Rocket's evil doings once more and got a rare prized possession in return. A clear bell. A literal jingle bell that looks like it came from the 25 cent bin at Hobby Lobby. Ha, <laughs> uh, get it? It's a joke. As if Hobby Lobby would stoop so low as to have a 25 cent bin. Yeah. Anyway, before we start the video, I will note now, as always, that we have explored glitches to clone Pokemon and items, as well as how to access the time travel function, and we may use both of these methods moving forward. After wrapping up in Goldenrod City, Anthony, man, I told you not to call me at 2 a.m. <sighs> Let's soar back over to Mahogany Town and continue our trek eastward. That rage candy bar salesman has evaporated and the psychic guy gives a prediction. Fortune tellers, let me tell you, they have horrible success rates. We can surf around here to capture two Poliwhirl. Why do we need two? Well, you guessed it, Poliwhirl got a new Evo in the Johto games, and the world is a better place because of it. Heading over to the tall grass, I also managed to find a Lickitung. Two Weepin' Bell, and a Tangela. Then it's time to put on your jackets, because we're diving into the frosty, icy path. Brrrr. Once again, let's give a huge shout out to those literal, descriptive location names. Yeah, yeah, good job guys. There are more ice skating puzzles in here, nothing too fancy. We can start off by grabbing a Swinub up here, and then tackle our first slippery maze. Our end goal is right above where we start, so if we move slowly to the left and hit the rock over here, there, there we go. We can skate clear to victory. You'll also want to do this miniature puzzle to get your hands on HMO7 Waterfall, as it's needed to access some areas later on. You might be thinking that ice skating puzzles are as fun as it gets, but uh, don't worry. Game Freak has your back. We also have some strength boulder puzzles to complete. We gotta push these bad boys down the hole so that we can complete the skating puzzle down below. So, let's get pushing. Caught one. Most of these are fairly simple. Uh, am I stuck? Oh no, there we go. Okay, now downward into the ice field, we want to circle around to land in the center where we can go even deeper. This area known as Basement Third Floor is where we're going to find a Jinx during the daytime. Notice she is purple now, in the US at least. You could have caught her further up in the cave, but then the catch rate is 1% and I have Dunspar's PTSD, so it's a little better down here. We can then time travel! To nighttime to find a Sneasel while we're down here, and everyone's favorite present wielding owl thingy, Delibird. Alright, enough dinking around in here. Let's elevate ourselves out into the moonlight to reach the secluded Blackthorn City. Thank you for noticing, random lady NPC. I am a hotshot trainer. We can't... Why can't we just battle some gym leaders and call it quits? All these side quests! Okay, let's go to Ecritique City before I get a migraine listening to this thing. You'll remember meeting the Flash. Oh, <laughs> I mean this monk guy here. Show him your jingle bell and he just lets you through. Really? That's all it took? Uh, you're greeted by three more monks who want to test your skills before letting you confront Suicune. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So... Now they finally see my worth and let me access the Tin Tower. The dog boys have been hanging out here the whole time. No wonder I haven't seen them around. The other two run off, but Suicune chooses to become my prisoner. <laughs> nah, he's pretty easy to catch. Just use those Ultra Balls and you'll nab him without much difficulty at all. 
The mystical man himself shows up and is super jealous. If his life was devoted to catching Suicune, what will he do now? I, I, I kind of feel bad, but uh, <laughs> finders keepers. Okay, we can finally get back to Blackthorn for our eighth gym battle, and oh, okay. <laughs> I thought we were going on another side quest. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this gym includes more strength boulder puzzles. <laughs> Game Freak, stop. We know you love to tease us, but this is enough. I just did these in the ice path a minute ago. Come on. Cool Trainer Cody? I can't tell if this is another Cody or if this is me from an alternate distant future. Only time will tell. Judging by his party choices, this is and never will be me. Seedra, really? But I'm still a cool trainer. We finally reach Claire and pound her dragons into the ground with the help of our new glowy dog boy. And we got our final badge. Wait, what? What? Lazy? How dare you! Are you friends with Bird Keeper Toby? She won't fork it over. I don't. I, I don't believe this. She wants me to go into the cave behind the gym. This seems really sus. Like uh, this is how murders happen. You want to know why Claire has a perfect win streak? Because she feeds victims to a Dragonite hiding in the cave. We have no choice but to gear up and enter the Dragon's Den. Apart from being the first place we will utilize the Whirlpool HM that Lance gave us, there's not much here. We can catch our Dratini while surfing around, though. Ooh, a mystery shrine room. I love mystery shrines! These old dudes have been in here for weeks just waiting to ask me their burning questions. The most important thing to me is actually pizza. Don't tell anybody. Hopefully I did a good job. Okay, he's telling her off. I guess we did it. Claire finally gives us the rising badge. We are ready, ladies and gents. It would seem that the last thing to do is head south to Route 45 back to New Bark Town, and then show our badge collection to Professor Elm. First, let's pop in this hole and enter the side of Dark Cave. Remember Dark Cave? Notable as the place where I spent three years trying to catch a Dunsparce. Anyone? Well, this is how this side looks. Also dark, unless you use Flash. The only reason to come in here is to catch an Ursa Ring during the day. And if we time travel, tonight we can find the fabulous Wobbuffet. Sure, there are some items hiding in here, but who cares? Let's get back out to Route 45 and catch some new Pokémon. In the tall grass, I managed to find several new species, including Donphan, Graveler, Gligar... No, not that, not that. The Pokémon Gligar. And a flying piece of sheet metal called Skarmory. Okay, so instead of traversing Route 45 and 46 down to New Bark Town, we're gonna cheat and just fly straight home. Boom! We should probably stop in and check on our mom, but nah! Let's go talk to Professor Elm. He says we've been doing a good job and then gifts us a Master Ball? Are you kidding me? I took down a freaking mob gang and got a magical Jingle Bell and now you give me the Master Ball? <sighs> well, you know what we're gonna do now. We're gonna clone like a thousand of these and make the rest of our Pokemon catching spree super easy. Once again, you can check out the episode we did on this glitch if you need a refresher. Okay, so now I'm feeling pretty unstoppable. Let's swing by the daycare really quick and drop off Jinx with our breeding stud, Ditto. Cause there's a new Pokemon we can get from doing this. While riding around waiting for Jinx to make babies, I finally got my Cyndaquil to hatch, officially adding it to my in-game Pokedex since the original was a clone. There's the daycare man. We can grind out this egg by biking through Goldenrod and finally get our hands on Jinx's unnecessary pre-evo, Smoochum! Before we make our way to the Pokemon League, we can take one other side quest now that we have HMO7 Waterfall. 
If we really want to round out our living decks, we should explore what lies within Mount Mortar. You may remember we caught a Meryl here once upon a time, but there's much more to do here, and now would be a good time to tackle it. As you may recall, the cave entrances lie just east of Ekritik City on Route 42. We're gonna go for this one here. Inside, we can hop aboard our trusty Meryl and surf around to find a Sea King. Then climb up the waterfall to reach this high cave door. I found him a choke here. Whoa, those biceps, damn. Let's head right and upward. At this point, as we dive deep into the mountain, make sure that you have at least one open slot in your party, because we're gonna go after a rare gift Pokemon. Then let's move all the way to the left and surf some more. Then around this way to a ladder. Grab this escape rope, we're gonna need it to get out of here with all these twists and turns. This one wraps completely around to another ladder. Okay, are you lost yet? Hiding in here in the depths of this rock, we find our old friend, Daniel LaRusso, Karate King. In our original Kanto adventure, we wasted him away at his makeshift gym he set up in Saffron City. Here he battles with Hitmonlee and Hitmonchan. Aha, just like old times. And if we defeat him, he gives us a brand new Pokemon called Tyrogue. Okay, well, good seeing you, man. Yeah, really. Let's get the heck out of here. Now, you may have seen that I like to dilly-dally while trying to reach the next area, so I thought now might be as good of a time as any to finally explain some more detailed headbutt mechanics. As you spot these little trees around and desperately whack your Pokémon's head against them, you might never come across certain rare Pokémon like Heracross unless you know exactly where to look. It turns out headbutt trees have their own little mathematical configuration, and certain trees are dubbed as rare locations or not, based completely on your trainer ID. That's right, another gameplay mechanic! Before you get too distressed though, a helpful person named T Shadow Knight made a helpful online tool that does all of the work for you. You godsend. I will link this tool in the description below, and by simply plugging in your ID and your location, you can find red star or rare headbutt trees to obtain these Pokemon. Since this is my tree, again, you probably won't have luck at this exact spot unless your ID is the same as mine, I managed to shake out an Apom, and finally the Honey Guzzling Heracross. Alright, that's all we can do for now, time to move on. Cody, meet me in Victory Road, if you dare. We need to settle this once and for all, figure out who the strongest trainer really is. See you then. Oh, really, Brandon? You asked for it. Let's fly back to New Barktown ASAP and prepare to surf east towards the Kanto region. I did move out to Johto to catch Pokemon, but the Pokemon League is still back over there, in our homeland! Do I know what I just did? Dude, you don't know who I am, do you? The thing separating the Kanto from the Johto here is this waterfall mess called Tojo Falls. Hey, don't question how I got my moving truck from Pallet Town to New Bark Town, okay? It's fine, just forget about it. On the eastern side of Route 27, we can find Doduo, Dodrio, Arbok, and a Ponyta. Then we turn to Route 26 here. Just gonna surf around you, <laughs> goodbye. And start the long trek north. You can find Sandslash in the tall grass on your way to Victory Road. Whoa, did the Pokemon League get new hallways? <laughs> no one will let me through though, for now. The only new Pokemon for us in here are Rhyhorn. And Rhydon. Where did all the trainers go? Oh, there you are. He's so salty nowadays. I miss the old Brandon, the one with short hair. The battle is no contest at all. Our Typhlosions duke it out to see who can Typhlo the best. It's... it's me. If you were wondering. Brandon vows to beat me one day and then walks off into the sunset. Well, into the darkness. We're in a cave. 
Come on, guys, be nice to Brandon. Just let the kid dream. Then we emerge to find ourselves on Route 23, home of the Indigo Plateau. Glad to be back. Ex-champion here. Remember me? I'm famous. Nobody cares. Stock up on all the items you need here, because the Elite Four can be pretty daunting. Remember, you can also clone either nuggets to sell for money, or straight up clone helpful items like revives. Okay, time to see how the Elite Four has changed since my reign. The first battle will be... Hello? Haha, <laughs> Cody! I see we finally meet again. Will? I hope you're ready for a quick and painless death. What? My pokey battle, of course. What? Wow. Just, wow. It's Will. If any of you have watched every Pokemon ever since Series 1, you may or may not remember my childhood friend here. This is crazy how far we've come. The reunions don't stop there either. We get to see Koga, who used to run the Fuchsia City Gym. I guess he got a promotion? Bruno's still putzing around here. And then the final member is... Karen? You may need to lie down because I am... Cody! Uh, hello. Keep training. You might become a Pokemon master. <laughs> What? What are the chances that a gorgeous babe not only sits on the Elite Four, but knows my name? <laughs> Whoa, this might be the happiest day of my life. Have a fun-filled, joy-filled, inspired, spectacular, exquisite day. Proud of you. After making sure that I definitely got Karen's phone number, it's time to go battle the final champion, Lance. He does remember me now. Interesting. And he still has his illegal Dragonites. I can't believe this is allowed. We have finally done it. Again. Our good friend Professor Oak saw the whole thing. Although this time we've upgraded from crushing his grandson in this palace to crushing him in a cave. He also brought a radio interviewer, but Lance doesn't like me enjoying my 15 minutes of fame, so he drags me off to register my party in the Hall of Fame forever. Will he remember me next time? We shall see. The adventure doesn't stop here. There's more to come and we aren't done with our Pokedex yet. Stay tuned for another mega episode of Every Pokemon Ever as we journey back home to the Kanto region and finish our Pokedex once and for all. Stay awesome, Pokemon fans. Pokemon Ever is 100% non-profit, by the fans, for the fans, but there is a way that you can help out. We're supporting St. Jude Children's Hospital. Donate today and help end childhood cancer.